on my cock hole. A call my mind, a curtain call. A program of reviews, previews, interviews, and features of and or with the great art and artists on Maui and beyond. I'm Paul James Brown. The Schaefer International Gallery is open for the first time in over a year. Yay! The latest exhibit is called Abstraction Times Three, and it features three outstanding artists. Tom Lieber from Kauai, Deborah Drexel from Oahu, and Don Burnshouse from Maui. All of these artists have wider connections with the art world. Mr. Lieber's work is in the Guggenheim and the Metropolitan Museum of Art, as well as the San Francisco MoMA and the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles. Mr. Burns' house made his name as a sculptor in the minimalist period of the 60s with Carl Andre and Saul LeWitt, and is now back to painting and clay. Ms. Drexler is a professor of drawing and painting at UH Manoa and maintains a studio in Brooklyn and has shown extensively in New York and across the country. When one walks into the gallery, you have to check and make sure you're still on Maui. The size of Mr. Lieber's and Ms. Drexler's works are what you would expect to see at museums in major metropolitan areas like New York, London, Paris, San Francisco, etc. Once again, Nida Bangreter, gallery director, and her assistant, the remarkable artist Jonathan Y. Clark, have given us a world-class exhibit. The look of this show from the lighting, the location of each piece, to the thought put into the space the viewer needs to fully appreciate the works demonstrates the brand of quality Ms. Bangreter and Mr. Clark are able to visualize and create. All art lovers on this island and in this state need to see this important show and be prepared to spend some time. This is not an exhibit you can run in and run out. Mr. Lieber and Ms. Drexler are doing traditional abstract work. That is, as Vasily Kandinsky defined it in Cossacks 1910, quote, art that does not attempt to represent an accurate depiction of a visual reality, but instead uses shapes, colors, forms, and gestural marks to achieve its effect, unquote. However, when one enters the inner gallery where Mr. Burnshouse's work has its own space, Ms. Bangreter asks the viewer to enter a new realm of abstraction, one where sensuality and expressiveness blend with recognizable forms such as heads, penises, fingers. This is more the world of the great abstract expressionists Willem de Kooning, Jasper Johns, and Lee Krasner. However, Mr. Burns' house works also include these tiny clay sculptures, some of which will remind the viewer of the Flintstones, and others are reminiscent of the Day of the Dead. Mr. Burns' house has given us 125 mixed media on paper works, and they span more than a decade, from 2008 to 2020. All of them, except for this untitled 2020 piece, have generous unpainted areas where the white paper shows through. However, this one has a red painted background that makes it jump off the wall. Mr. Burns' house's work would make a great coffee table book and I would leave a page with lined paper opposite every image where one could leave reaction notes. Mr. Burns' house takes the viewer on a journey into the grief and revelations at the passing of his wife, dealing with the vagaries of this transitory existence we call life, and other memories. It's a kind of art meditation, I think. Uh, uh, I, I don't think of much else. I just think about what's in front of me, and it's, a lot of that is intuitive. It's not programmed or anything. Uh, uh, I might just pour some water on the paper and then take some ink lines and, you know, as Thomas suggested and Deborah as well, you go from there. Whatever it suggests, uh, uh, you proceed along that path. If this isn't abstract expressionism, I don't know what is. The titles of the works are not beneath or near each piece, but listed adjacently to the identified row. Take a photo of these, and then you can easily refer to the title of each work. The title helps the viewer understand the artist's intent, while not limiting the individual's own unique experience of the work. Some of these will make you laugh, others will touch your heart and soul, and still others will combine these feelings. But you cannot view Mr. Burnshouse's work without being moved, and while they appear to be similar from a distance, move closer and allow the work to make its magic. The State Foundation on Culture and the Arts found three of the framed works by Mr. Burns' house were worthy of recognition and acquisition for the state's magnificent art collection. 
They're all from 20,008. Weather, head with India printed paper and Korean calligraphy, bird, parentheses, and man, close parentheses. The other two in this series, man and plant and man and a rock, from 2015, were not for sale. Mr. Lieber's work dominates the gallery, where you check in. His two largest works, Contact and Lava, are each 76 by 142 inches. The State Foundation on Culture and the Arts decided to give Contact a recognition and purchase award. All of Mr. Lieber's works, both his oil paintings and his monoprints, possess an illicit energy, excitement, and motion. In an excellent film by Doug DeBoer of Visual Alchemy Studios, Mr. Lieber talks about the V-shape in the work. Uh, this kind of V-shape, that uh, it's an expression of that lower center in the body, which is where one goes when they're meditating. That seems to be the uh, main focus for me right now, is that I start with that. I know that that's going to be in a painting. I don't have a concrete plan because um, as I'm starting a new canvas, I, I'm just working around, scraping off, erasing, putting more paint on, and the, the composition begins to form itself. You can see the entire film at the Maui Arts and Cultural Center's website at www.mauiarts.org and go to current and upcoming exhibits. Contact has an overwhelming black wave that rather than engulfing the viewer in its power, energy, and scale, pulls one along toward the left like a maelstrom beyond the boundaries of the painting. Lava, on the other hand, though meant to be a companion, both in scale and in dominant color palette, has that red which pulls one's eyes and transfixes. Deborah Drexler revels in color. Her work almost smiles. The State Foundation on Culture and the Arts couldn't resist her mega work, Gold Stream. It's 84 by 120 inches. In all of Ms. Drexler's work, despite its bright, shiny, engaging color palette, there's almost always some black in there. For example, in Gold Stream, the black form off center bottom appears to be connected like a lower torso or a leg to the body-like figure with its head thrown back, and the gold appears to be exploding from where its mouth might be. Ms. Drexler says about her work. Painter, I actually started as an abstract painter. It was, it was abstraction that captured me. And a lot of what captured me about abstraction was that sense of, of expansion, was that sense of it being talking about something beyond what everyday experience is, almost a um, transcendent experience, are connecting a little bit deeper with what it means to be human. Abstraction Time 3 gallery hours are Wednesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Admission is free. Visitors will be limited to 15 at one time, and all will be required to wear masks. This is a great exhibit, and I highly encourage art lovers to hell on over to the Maui Arts and Cultural Center ASAP. Well, that's Curtain Call for this week. Next week, I'll have a review of the reopening of Pro Arts Playhouse where they'll be hosting for six performances with Vinny Linares in his one-man show portrayal of Father Damien, now known as Saint Damien. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Paul James Brown. Ahoy ho!